Hi there, so tip number five is about an important topic for anyone dealing with online transactions, handling currencies and amounts with precision. Whether you're managing a small business or developing a large e-commerce platform, getting this right is critical for maintaining accuracy and avoiding costly mistakes. Let's start by understanding why handling currency correctly is so important. At first, it might seem straightforward, but even small errors can have significant consequences. This is especially true when you consider that payment processes like Stripe expect amounts in the smallest denominations. For example, if you're dealing with a US dollar transaction, you need to think in cents. If you have $20, you must send that amount to Stripe as 2,000 cents. By adhering to this standard, you eliminate potential floating point arithmetic issues which can lead to inaccuracies in calculations. Now the conversion from dollars to cents is fairly straightforward, but it's important to be aware that not all currencies work the same way. Take the Japanese yen, for example. It doesn't even use decimal points, making it critical to implement a consistent conversion function. Here's an example of how you can create a simple helper function for this purpose. Using this JavaScript function, you can convert $20 to 2,000 cents easily and accurately. But why does this accuracy matter so much? The answer lies in how we perform calculations. When you're calculating order totals, taxes, or even splitting payments, floating point arithmetic can lead to rounding errors. Even a tiny error might not seem significant at first, but they can accumulate and result into substantial discrepancies over time. So how do we fix this? The key is to implement precision decimal handling. You want to ensure that you round your calculations at appropriate stages. Let's take a look at a more robust method for calculating order totals that keeps precision in mind. Here's a function that sums up items and applies tax correctly. This function begins by calculating the subtotal by summing up the total price for each item, multiplying the price by the quantity. After that, it calculates the tax by multiplying the subtotal by the tax rate, ensuring that it rounds to the result to eliminate any potential floating point errors. Finally, it adds the subtotal and the correctly calculated tax together for an accurate total. So remember, whether you're dealing with a handful of transactions or thousands, precision in currency handling can save you time, money, and headaches down the line. And by using the smallest currency units and implementing robust conversion processes, you can avoid errors that could cost you dearly. Thanks for tuning in. Let's move on to tip number six.